If you want to try puppet animation for the first time, a great way to get started is by making a twisted wire armature. In this video, I will show you how to do that. To follow along, you will need some wire, a block of wood, a drill, some doweling, and an idea for a character. Actually, it would also help if you had a calculator. Oh, and a ruler. Actually, I'll make you a list. As well as more high concept information pieces, I also want to do some how-to videos on various aspects of stop motion. With that in mind, today is going to be the first of what I'm going to call Tutorial Tuesdays, for obvious reasons. This doesn't mean that every Tuesday will be a tutorial, but if there is a tutorial, it will be on a Tuesday. It also ups the bar on the alliteration game. Do I now need to have Theoretical Thursday or Fun Fact Friday? Eh, maybe not. To make a twisted wire armature, all you technically need is some wire in your hands. The technique that I'm going to show you today makes things both faster and easier, which are always good things in my book. We will start out with a character design. I've done a quick sketch of a gorilla-like puppet, because I want to show that this technique will work with any proportion of character. If you've put more time and effort into your design than I have, then I recommend scanning it and working with a copy, because we are going to be scribbling all over it. If you haven't got a design, then you can just use a photograph of you or a friend. When you print it out, try and make sure that the printout matches the size of the puppet that you're going to try and make. This will make things a lot easier for you in future stages. Your photographs and sketches should really be in an open position, with your character looking straight ahead. You don't want any foreshortening adding confusing measurements to your puppet. It might be a good idea to do a profile sketch at the same scale, so you can see things like how long the feet are and how far the knees come out, things like that. You may notice that I haven't really included hands in this sketch, and this isn't just because I ran out of space on the page. I'm planning on using replacement hands for this armature, so it's not important to know what they look like at this point. For those of you who do want to include your hands as part of the armature, I'll show you what to do with the feet, and then you can just extrapolate from there. So what we're looking to do here is to put some lines around where we think the skeleton would be. So these will be shoulders, hips, arms, neck, spine, that sort of thing. So the first one that I will do will be the shoulders. So we don't want to go edge to edge because there will be some padding around the um, puppet. If you do have the original construction lines that you did for your sketch, they will actually come in useful. We also have the hips and similarly, we try to guess where they would be within the puppet. Then for the spine, if we work out we're halfway along there. Now, the same way that I'm not going to be doing hands on this puppet, I'm also not going to be doing the head. So the neck is just going to be a stump of a thing. What I like to do is work out where the elbows and knees are. The elbows are around here, and the knees are around there. Probably you're going to be cutting the ends off these wires to put the KNS tube on, so it doesn't really matter how long they are as long as they're long enough. To do the feet, we will estimate what we're going to be doing. So we'll have one toe there, two, three. Now at this point, if you have the patience, dexterity and calluses, you can do the rest by hand. What you would do is you would take the wire 
and you'd start laying it out along the limbs. Be sure to go around each limb twice. This is time consuming, fiddly and also quite painful. So I suggest you use a pegboard. As the name suggests, a pegboard is a combination of board and pegs. Ignore the rest of the wood, that's just used as an improvised work surface occasionally. The important part is this side. So this is just a series of holes drilled into a rough grid pattern. When you do this, I recommend wrapping masking tape around your drill bit. This gives you an indication when to stop. It won't make you stop, however, so don't come complaining to me if you drill into your dining table. I use a six millimeter drill bit because I have six millimeter doweling. So this is just sections of doweling cut into about 30 millimeter lengths, and these fit conveniently into the holes. So the first thing we want to do is measure the lengths of the limbs and the body. We don't at this point care about things like shoulders and elbows and knees. All we want is the distance between the bottom of the neck and the center of the hips. So this point here and here. So to do that, we will go around and we'll measure the lines that we've just drawn. And now that we've done that, we need to go around and add these up um, by limb, by body, by neck and by foot. Now, we can't take these numbers directly because when you twist wire, you lose some length. If you take 20 centimeters of wire, fold it in half and twist it, it'll come out at just under nine centimeters, which means you lose just over a tenth of the desired length. To compensate for that, I recommend increasing your totals by a tenth to reach the magic numbers. Now that you've got these numbers, it's time to move over to the pegboard. Ah, I almost made the same mistake that I always make. When we're using the pegboard, because we're going along each limb or body twice, the length is doubled. However, we've added on the length that we need for the foot. If we just add that on normally, it too will be doubled and we'll have enough wire for two feet. What we need to do is half the length that we need for the feet, because this will be doubled again when we go round the peg and back. So the next thing we need to do is transfer the measurements from the sketch to pegs on the board. So I'm gonna start with the shortest section, which is the neck, which is 17. So I'll put that one there. And I'm hoping that, that one will be just about right. The pelvis, which is 65, which looks to be that one. Then we have the arms, which is 105, 102, so just over 100 mil is what we're looking for. And the corresponding one. So with the replaceable foot version, that is 75. So that will be this one. Whereas the leg with the foot as part of it is uh, 129. So that is here. And this is the peg layout that we're going to use for this puppet. The next thing we're gonna do is put the wire around these pegs. So start off with a bit of a tail, then pick a leg and go around that. Back to the bottom of the body. Now the key thing here is you need to go round that peg, up to the bottom of the neck, down one arm, up to the bottom of the neck, around the top of the neck, 
around the other arm, back up to the bottom of the neck, around the bottom of the body, around the leg, and then back up. Now once you've got this, you need to start twisting. You can either do this by hand, which takes time and is actually quite uncomfortable, or what I like to use is a drill with a hook on the end. So pick one of the pegs. I like to start with the feet. Holding the loose end and then start. Now I don't suggest using the drill for the body, largely because whichever end you turn, all the arms will wrap around, the legs will wrap around, everything will just get tangled up. So unfortunately, this bit you do need to do by hand. As I said, doing it by hand takes a bit of effort take up any additional slack in the neck, legs, and arms. If you can find them, try and use pliers with smooth insides. What you don't want to do is scratch or nick the wire because that'll be where the wire will try and break. Smooth pliers like this reduce the amount of damage done. Just with the pliers, Take any remaining loose ends and just tidy them away somewhere. That will all be covered with masking tape or whatever you use later. And you should end up something like that. Now take your wire armature and bend it and place it on top of your sketch to make sure that everything lines up as you expect it to do. You may note that the foot that we plan to make part of the armature is a little bit um, twisted. So, uh, First thing we need to do is untwist it. Then it needs shaping into the foot. Not necessarily the neatest of jobs, but our little gorilla guy now has a foot. The next thing we would do with this would be to put the KNS tubing on the wrists, and then that will allow us to know where we need to bind the bones with masking tape. And that will be for the next video. This is all from Tutorial Tuesday. See you next time.